I wanted to show you uh, a, a red flag in the book Worlds Beyond the Poles by Giannini. This is the third video in the series. And I found a red flag in the book Worlds Beyond the Poles. It claims right there in the book that McMurdo Station is 400 miles west of the South Pole. As you can see here, I've got the ruler tool sitting right on McMurdo Base. And when I draw a line to the geographic South Pole, it's it's about 800 it's over 800 miles so it's over double the length that the book says they traveled it says they traveled from McMurdo base to the south pole and it that the trip was for the base was 400 miles west of the south pole Something is not adding up because, look, it's about 835 miles from McMurdo Base, a research station, to the geographic 90-degree South Pole. So what I believe is happening here is we're being deceived. This is all these research stations around the outer perimeter and a few. They've got several in the interior sections. I believe what is happening is... Antarctica is basically the outer ice ring, just as the flat earth, various flat earth maps say it is. They found the south pole on the flat earth map, and they found the north pole. I don't know where they are. We have a few clues. For example, in Australia, I believe the south magnetic pole is, is below Australia, but above Antarctica. They, it's somewhere in here. Some is the 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 magnetic South Pole is off the coast of Antarctica. They claim it's it's drifting and it moves around just like the the magnetic North Pole allegedly drifts around. They have to have been talking about the geographic South Pole, McMurdo being 400 miles west of the South Pole. So what I believe is happening here is basically. The world, if, if the flat earth maps are correct, then we have the outer ice rings. And they've found that there's a north pole on the ring and there's a south pole on the ring. We don't know where the poles are uh, because we believe the south circle is the south pole, the entire ice ring. Apparently, according to the book, there, there are poles. Uh, the compasses, I believe, are pointing somewhere. They're, they're pointing north. So I'm just not sure if they're pointing to the cent. If you're anywhere around here, they point to the center. But we have some evidence that in Australia and New Zealand, if you take a compass that was made in the Northern Hemisphere and you take it down to Australia and New Zealand, it won't point north. It'll point. It, it thinks north is, would be this way, I believe. So... It's not very widely publicized, but they make special compasses for Australia and New Zealand so that the compass will point north as if they're on a globe. Anyway, here's Australia on a flat earth map. And by the way, the book or the Gleason's map states that there is no sunlight beyond 80 degrees south. So this is would be 
dark, apparently, with no sunlight. I'm not sure how they're pulling off what they're doing with the Edmonds and Scott, the South Pole Station. I don't believe it's where they say it is, because there's no sunlight beyond 80 degrees south. So you can see here, I believe the ice starts at about 70 degrees south, give or take, 70, 75. And then the darkness, the sun cannot reach beyond 80 degrees. So 90 degrees would be in darkness year-round, if, if the Gleason's is correct. So I, I believe what they're saying is McMurdo would be here on the, on the, uh, on a little island surrounding the ice ring. And they would travel 400 miles in to get to the 90 degree South Pole Edmondson Scott research station. As for what is beyond here, this is, they say that they traveled 400 miles to the South Pole from McMurdo on a globe that is impossible. But on a flat earth map, it makes sense. South is towards the outer rim, so it's possible that wherever the South Pole, and we don't really know where, if they've located it, but it, it may in fact be where the, the magnetic South Pole is pointing, right off the coast of Antarctica below Australia. So if that's the case, then they may have flown from McMurdo to 400 miles to the South Pole, and then from there... They claim to have gone 2,300 miles. So they, they may have, uh, in fact, the dome may not be here. The dome may be much further out into, uh, to, uh, to mankind. It may seem like an infinite distance. And also, it, it makes sense that the McMurdo would be here and, uh, 400 miles would be somewhere in here. Or maybe not, maybe not even if, if they're getting sunlight. Let's remember the Gleason says nothing beyond 80 degrees, so they're probably somewhere around 75. If I had to guess, if the Gleason is correct, they're probably around 75 to get a little bit of sunlight to, to trick everybody and to show the sun low on the horizon. Yeah, but anyway, from, from there, they say they traveled an additional 2300 miles. So they went from McMurdo to the South Pole, and then beyond an additional 2,300 miles, so... And when they got out there, they said it it's, was like an infinite plane. And that uh, they could just keep going in 5,000 mile increments ad infinitum. So they, they could just keep going in the south southerly direction, and every time they hit 5,000 miles out, they'd mark that as the new South Pole, and then they'd fly another 5,000 miles, and when they'd reach that, they would mark that as the New South Pole, and when they would, then they'd establish another 5,000 beyond that, they would just keep going. But the author of the book says that as you continue going out, you, you begin to start going up into the celestial. Let me show you on the other map in the book. Here is the map, right from the book, by Giannini, Worlds Beyond the Poles. And what I've done is I've superimposed a flat earth map. And look at this. This is the South Pole and this is the North Pole. So look at this. So they've discovered one side of the ice ring points south. One side has a North Pole. Or that's just what they're labeling it. I, I, I'm not sure how that works, but... And they're saying uh, McMurdo Base is 400 miles west of the South Pole. So what I believe is they took off from McMurdo and flew this way. Twenty, They flew 400 miles from McMurdo to the South Pole, which is somewhere probably in this black region of the circle. And then they went beyond that 2,300 miles, which is probably would take them here. Because keep in mind, this, the outer, this whole entire circumference is probably something like 60,000 miles or so. So as you can see, the scale, the massive scale we're talking here. So if this circle, if you were to, to lay it out, it would probably extend somewhere to here. That'd be 60,000 miles. 
they probably back in the 50s or you know the book was written in 59 they believed yeah every which way they looked it just it appeared to be an, just an infinite plane so when they set out perhaps uh I mean, the, the writer claims that the further you go, you actually, you begin to start going up into the celestial. So if you can imagine, the author was saying that they, you know, future expeditions, they would go, they would plot 5,000 miles, would, you know, probably be here. And from there, they'd go another 5,000, that'd be the new South Pole. From there, they'd go another 5,000, that'd be the new South Pole, and it'd keep going ad infinitum, is what the author says here. So, but you apparently could go either way. You could go, they took expeditions. It says here, bird flu. Uh, he said there's endless connecting land beyond the North Pole, discovered in 47 by Admiral Bird. It says here, U.S. Naval Force flight 2,300 miles beyond the South Pole in 56. And look where the arrow is pointing here. So I'm not sure. Maybe this map needs to be bigger. I'm not sure what, how, what, if this is up to scale or not. But basically, this is the South Pole here, and this is the North Pole, and we're sitting at the North Center. Is not the North Pole of the circular map. And they're saying whichever way you go, you you eventually start going up into the celestial here, and there's. I believe the uh, the heavens above. If there is an exit point on either pole, and you can go just for what seems like infinity, this makes a lot of sense. This map here. So it's saying from the South Pole into the so-called heavens above. So they, you know, they may have found a way up into the celestial. I'm not sure if if this. Is supposed to be the, the dome here. This is the firmament and the waters above and below and all that. The firmament separating the waters from the waters and I think that's pictured, depicted here by the wave looking thing. So this is uh, the author's take, land, ice, water, land, ice, and water throughout the universe. And so that's it. That's what I, I wanted to, to point out that on a globe, McMurdo is, is not 400 miles west of the geographic South Pole. It is, it's over 800 miles. So the, the, the book, either the book is wrong or the globe is wrong. So there were some very, very big players here. Uh, in the, this 1928, when Sir George Hubert Wilkins was getting ready to take off the Hearst Wilkins expedition, there were two, one in 28 and one in 29, and I believe the book says Bird was there with him. It says right here, the discovery, connecting land discover, discovery beyond South Pole, December 1928, Admiral Richard Bird and Sir George Hubert Wilkins. So we may not have been told the entire truth, thinking that it was Wilkins who was the first to fly an airplane over the, the quote, continent of Antarctica when in fact it may have been both of them. I mean, we just don't know who all was involved. It's it's hard to believe much of anything these days, but when I heard the caller call in with this information, uh, I, I heard the name Hubert Wilkins. I knew immediately I had to start looking into this. And then as soon as I talked about it, the books on Amazon skyrocketed and disappeared. And hopefully someone... Um, I know that some people said they ordered a copy, and so if you were able to get one, and uh, please let us know. Let us know if there's anything else in that book that we need to be aware of, and other little nuggets that we can look into. So this could be the model of uh, of actually how it's it's laid out here, if the book is right and the author is correct. But anyway, you get the idea. So you can see the scale, the sheer scale of this. Is our entire world is in this section here. So outside of it would seem like just an endless, infinite plane here. 